just recording. Yes, say hello. 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 <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is called Shaky Burns. It's a slow reading club. My name is Marco. I'm very glad to see you today because uh, uh, all big people have a holiday today. But all nice and clever people come here. So today we have this little song really for our a question. Do you know the Beatles? Obviously. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, the band the Beatles. So what do you think is the uh, greatest song of the Beatles? What is the song that you think of when you think about the Beatles? Yellow Submarine. Yeah. Yellow yeah. Submarine. Yes. Yesterday. Lemon Tree. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little face or something. Uh, does anyone think about Octopus's garden when you talk about the Beatles? No, I don't know. No. No. Why not? Not very. You see it the first time. Mm -hmm. It's the first time you see it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, have you heard the song? No. no. I like the bay, I'm the sea, in Octopus's garden, in the shade. No. no. The Beatles is not popular in Russia. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Of course it's popular. We have lots of tribute bands and festivals. Huh? Well, okay, it's your homework to find and listen to <laughs> Octopus's Garden. I'm not sure, I think it's not on an album, I think it was a single, and this was uh, the B-side of uh, some single, probably. But anyway, when you uh, listen to it, uh, you're like, ah, the Beatles, the great, great Beatles, you may like or not like them, but they're uh, really great. They made a revolution in music. So now when we listen to the Beatles, like, ah, okay, nice. But uh, at the time when they made it, it, it was a real revolution, something unthinkable, especially like, baby, I'll drive my car. It was a really strange music at the time, very progressive. And uh, you uh, have all these uh, normal lyrics about a boy, a girl, love, 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 or you have some clever lyrics, oh, let it be, let it be. And then suddenly you have Octopus's Garden, which is like, is it for babies? Is it for children? What sort of a rubbish is it? And guess what? Who, who, who wrote it? Who wrote it? Have the answer here. Who wrote it? Richard Starkey? Yeah, who's Richard Starkey? He was the Beatles. Beatles. <laughs> no. The producer of the Beatles. Oh, goodness me. Uh, Richard Starkey yeah. is Ringo Starr. Oh. Ringo Starr. That's his real name, Richard Starkey. And of course, uh, as we all, uh, I guess, uh, we all know, the last words of a drummer before he is uh, kicked out of his band is like, hey guys, look, I wrote a song. Yeah. So uh, Ringo Starr comes to, to these guys and says, hey guys, I wrote a song, how about we sing it? Cause it's just Lennon McCartney, Lennon McCartney, McCartney, Lennon, Lennon McCartney. Hello, I have a song too. I'm a real musician. I have a song too. And they're like, ah, oh, okay, Ringo, we love you. We'll sing your song, but we'll put it on B-side so nobody can see it. And of course, it wasn't very nice uh, for Ringo, but that's all they did, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway. We have this uh, really strange little song and uh, you don't really think much about it when you think about the Beatles but maybe after uh, today's meeting you will uh, see that uh, this will be your uh, song number one and uh, when somebody asks you about the Beatles say ah yeah the Octopus's Garden that's uh, the guys who did the Octopus's Garden so let's start with uh, not singing uh, just uh, reading it. Of course, it doesn't sound very nice when you read it because it's supposed to be sung. Oh, let's try. Okay. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. He'd let us in, no swear we be, in his octopus's garden in the shade. I'd ask my friends to come and see an octopus's garden with me. I'd like to be under the sea, in octopus's garden in the shade. We would be warm below the shore, in our little hideaway beneath the waves. 
resting our heads on the sea bed, and an octopus is guarding near the cave. We will sing and dance around, because we know we can't be found. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. We would shout and swim about the coral that lies beneath the waves, beneath the ocean waves. Oh, what joy for every girl and boy, knowing they're happy and they're safe, happy and they're safe. We would be so happy, you and me, no one there to tell us what to do. I'd like to be under the sea, in an octopus's garden with you, in an octopus's garden with you, in an octopus's garden with you. So what do you think about this stuff? This. Excuse me, can I get a brochure? It's back there. Yeah, and it's a good idea. If you still don't have it, then go and grab it. It's good to have uh, the text which you're discussing. Yeah. Believe me. So what can you tell me about this? Do you have any uh, impressions, ideas? Can you see anything interesting in it? What do you think about it? Mm, I think it's in interesting to be under the sea in the garden. Uh -huh. So some um, sea garden. <coughs> uh -huh. What is uh, octopus's garden? I don't know. Yes, what is octopus's garden? Question number one. What is this place? It's very English song because even octopuses have their gardens. Maybe it's very English or maybe it's very classical. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So, um, first of all, I'd like to be under the sea. Is it a normal wish? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if he is not some um, sea creature, mm -hmm. yeah. for, for a human being, for a normal human well, for being. For beetles, maybe thinking mm -hmm. about yellow submarine. Mm -hmm. It's always something submarine. But here they are not in a submarine. Uh, but just still in the, the sea. Under the sea. Yeah. What is it about the sea? What is it about the sea? Do we know any places under the sea, under water? Atlantis! Mm -hmm. More, yeah. more, more. Places under the sea. We need places under the sea. Anyone, please. Drone ships. Drone ships. Oh, well, it's not really a place, okay? I like a. Here we have a garden. There we have Atlantis, a country. Do we know any other places like not? Mm -hmm. Who was it? Conan Doyle who went there? <coughs> it's right now. And we have those cities on the water. Oh, Captain Nemo and his boat. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's again a boat, like a little place. And we have a massive, massive uh, thing with uh, magical kingdoms underwater. We know lots and lots of stories where the hero goes under the sea in, in the water. And there, surprise, there's a magic kingdom. And you don't have problems with breathing. And you don't have uh, problems with anything. Lightning. Yeah, well, right. Light, it's like a normal reality, only underwater. So we, we, we know this story. Sometimes you go on the ground, sometimes you go somewhere high up, climb a tree, something. Sometimes you go underwater. So water is a uh, very magical, has always been very magical substance. Like witches can't cross running water. Water is like uh, beginning of life. Beginning of life. The sea is this massive, massive water. The sea uh, is very often is like wisdom. I mean, you go into this wisdom, yeah, go deep into your study. It's, it's like a symbol of soul. Like sea it's within you, soul. it mm -hmm. means your psychological, your state of mind. Mm -hmm. So we have... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's romantic. We love sea. 
in, in, in romantic things, it's a very, um, it's great and mysterious and wild, mm -hmm. and we can't go into it. We need a special boat, a special ship. It's uh, not a uh, friendly. It's or a friendly. costume at least. Costume, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he didn't say it literally, so he just again anticipated that he mm -hmm. just wanted to hide from a reality. Uh -huh. uh, to do what he wants. Uh -huh. and, uh, but so here we that have a specific uh, place that he is uh, discussing. So he wants to get to this specific, specific uh -huh. place. Uh -huh. So now by the advisor of him uh -huh. mm, to do what he wants. Uh -huh. yeah. So let's see. So first of all, we have I want to be under the sea. We have this sea which is like a barrier or border. Yeah, this mass of water or something that separates two places. One is where we come from and one is the octopus's garden. Up is uh, our usual reality. Down here is something strange. One, two, three, four, two more. Five, six, seven. sort of a garden thing. So we have something very magical. It's underwater kingdom. Is it a nice place? Yeah. He wants to nice? escape there, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay, garden. Do we like gardens? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. we love gardens. Is there a great garden? Uh -huh. Especially underwater gardens. Underwater gardens. <laughs> huh? So, uh, do we know any gardens? Any special gardens? Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden, wow! Bingo! Which again is a very special the first place. One. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we, we have lots of magical gardens in uh, history. We have it in Greece, we have it in Christianity, we have it everywhere because we love gardens. And now we have this garden underwater, so it sounds quite right. A magical place, a garden on the sea. Uh, who has it? Octopus. Octopus. <laughs> <laughs> an octopus. Why an octopus? That's great. Why not a dolphin's little garden? Do you say? Because he has eight um, arms, extremes, or what? Yeah. So he can manage everything in his garden. Okay, maybe a dolphin could do it too. Dolphins are very clever. Yeah, but <laughs> they don't have uh, these uh, <laughs> hands or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the dolphins could have trained uh, octopus. <laughs> maybe <laughs> that would be high rock. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe the octopus looks like the garden. Uh -huh. So what about an octopus? Why do, why, why do we have an octopus here? Because octopus can do many things at a time. He has uh -huh. eight arms. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He's uh, the better gardener uh -huh. okay. than So dolphin. he's a good gardener. He can do multitask. That's good for you. You're a gardener. Do, do we know uh, any gardeners? Who is the big gardener in our culture? God. God. Right here? Octopus. <laughs> Octopus. <laughs> So he is God of this. He takes place of God. Yeah. Because, well, uh, strictly speaking, uh, who says that God has to look like a human being? That's uh, like uh, racism, species. <laughs> species. Species. Or egocentrism, egocentrism. on behalf of. Anthropocentrism. Yeah. Oh, anthropocentrism. Yeah. So uh, maybe God can look like an octopus if, if he did. Not? Why not? And as an image, it, it's uh, it's nice because, uh, yeah, a lot, as we said, lots of hands doing lots of things. And one big head with a lot. One big head. Both brains. Mm -hmm. And also, it's it can be very hard to find an octopus. Because they're very good at this guy. <laughs> And what sort of an octopus is it? Is it uh, just a normal gardening octopus? <laughs> no, no he's not ordinary. He's uh, enlightened. Uh -huh. Enlightened. Uh -huh. 
she knows where we've been. So she, mm -hmm. she has it's clever and friendly. But it's a nice place. She has some psychic knowledge. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And it's in the shade. Why in the shade? And we repeat it again and again. Uh, octopus's garden in the shade. Octopus's garden in the shade. He tries to hide. Maybe he tries to hide. So it's the hidden garden. Uh -huh. it's not simple to hide. Uh -huh. My question is in the shade of what? Ah, yeah, exactly. In the shade of what? Or in the shade of cave. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, if we have a cave, maybe we have a big rock there. Maybe we really have this Atlantis there. In the shade of Atlantis. <laughs> Has anyone been to Atlantis? <laughs> no. It doesn't exist. Everywhere. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist. There are no tours available well, for May say. weekend. Say. Well, anyway, if you haven't been there, then you, you won't tell me that I do it wrong. I don't really know what it looks like. Although some people say that uh, maybe it's not underwater, maybe it's right in the middle of. Uh, what was it? America, Africa, somewhere in the middle of the continent because you have a strange place which uh, uh, looks like the description of Atlantis. Well, anyway. Maybe it's in Jordan, <coughs> like Petra. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So, an octopus's garden in the shade. So, the shade is a bit strange. And uh, the first one we read it is uh, okay, a shade, it means it's, it's nice, it's not hot, maybe it's hidden. But uh, what is a shade? Really? Secret. Maybe a secret? Uh -huh. Who are the shades? Ghosts. 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 Hmm? In the shade, so maybe uh, maybe it's a hint uh, talking about death, really. Mm. In the shade, meaning it's uh, the kingdom of the dead. Mm. Maybe. Mm. We, we have other things in this. Uh, poem which uh, pointed Ted. But just now, let's just say, oh, okay, shade, nice. He would let us in. Very interesting. He would let us in. But can you tell me about it? What does it mean he would let us in? He's not only he God, but he's Peter? also Saint Peter. He's Saint Peter too. Mm -hmm. He's guarding the gates. Yeah. Maybe there's a gate, maybe there's a magic circle. Oh, whatever. The port. Yeah. The port or the entrance. And this octopus, not just any silly old octopus, he can choose to let you in or not to let you in. Yeah. He's a very important guy there. It's you his need garden. To ask him. It's his <laughs> garden. You can't just uh, come there. You need to ask him. He would let us in, but he's very friendly. He doesn't mind people coming. Why? Uh, knows where we've been. And uh, that's uh, in an interesting line. And I forgot to turn on the reporter. Okay. Uh, Shall we repeat everything from the beginning? Okay, if you're ready to do it. <coughs> yeah, in two <coughs> words, uh, the octopus looks like uh, God, and his garden looks like the Garden of Eden. And maybe it's like Atlantis because it's underwater, and it's a magical kingdom because it's underwater. Maybe like uh, the kingdom of the dead because it's in the shade. We'll see. So he would let us in. Uh, he's friendly, he can let you in. It's his place. You need his approval to come. Knows where we've been. And these words are very interesting because you can uh, understand them differently. He would let us in, know where we've been. Maybe he is, if he is a god, he uh -huh. knows which people are good and uh -huh. he lets them in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so maybe uh, knows where we've been <coughs> means knows what kind of people we are. He knows we are nice and he lets us in. Uh, maybe knows where we've been. Uh, he knows that we have been at some really horrible place. Uh, ah, come in, come in, <laughs> poor little people. Maybe. Uh -huh. A any other ideas about it? No one will have been. Maybe like he he's been through the same things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he understands mm -hmm. us very much. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and if you stay long enough, you turn into an octopus. Yeah, like refugee camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it's important that he knows well they. He knows all about us, or at least well they. His octopus is garden in the shade. So octopus's garden is a really strange expression if you think about it. What sort of a garden can an octopus have? But then if you say that ah, an octopus is just uh, another word for God, then it's okay. <coughs> I would ask my friends to come and see an octopus's garden with me. Mm. It is very strange if we explain it like uh, death is a shade, shade is a death. Uh -huh. But, yeah, uh, the, the person uh, invites his friends to die. Yeah, <laughs> like collective suicide. Uh, maybe, maybe it's like uh, you don't need to hurry, but after you die, yeah, because uh, you, you die eventually. Sorry, that's news for you. So Spoiler: <laughs> Everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> so if, it means that if he, he, he finds. Is this a special place you mm -hmm. share with friends? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very close. Mm -hmm. So it's different from what we read before about all these ah, romantic poets who walk alone in these strange places and see interesting things and never ask their friends to come and see too. They just write poems about it. Like, ah, I'm so clever, I went there, I saw this thing, you'll never be there, you'll never be able to see it. Here he says, no, uh, the more the merrier, let everyone come, let everyone come. And again, it sounds like religion, isn't it? Sounds a bit like religion. I asked my friends to come and see an octopus's garden with me. So it's not uh, selfish, you want to share it, you want to share it with your friends, means you are really uh, happy and open. It's a really nice place to <coughs> have friends. So this place has friends. It's a nice place. Come and see. And you can ask, you can invite people. Again, the octopus doesn't mind. Say, ah, okay, it's very good if people come here. It's good for everyone. And another interesting thing here is the article. Which article is interesting? We will be an octopus. An octopus. Why is it interesting? Like any octopus, but here it's absolutely one definite octopus. Mm -hmm. And one definite. And when we say about God, it's the God. It's mm -hmm. not. So is it an octopus or a garden? Is it some? Octopus's garden, so one octopus who has lots of gardens, or is it uh, some strange octopus, one of many, who has a garden, one of many? I think uh, the indefinite article "n" refers to garden, not mm -hmm. to, not to octopus. Mm -hmm. A garden, mm -hmm. it means. So mm -hmm. it's so just. He has many. So he has many gardens. Oh, as many gardens <coughs> as there are people. So yeah. just basically. Mm -hmm. Octopus's garden with me. But uh, you, you, if you want other people to see your paradise, your garden, you just invite them. No problem. Can you do it in Sims? Where? In Sims? The computer game Sims? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can. Maybe you can build it. There are some computer games or mobile games. I don't remember. I know you can't do it in Chris Do uh -huh. You think so? Oh. Well, maybe they come to their own garden. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, in an octopus's garden, in the shade, we are end with shade again. So the end of, of the line, the end of the stanza is a strong uh, place. What we put there has a special meaning. Yeah. We start with I, I would. I would, I would like, I would ask, and the end with shade. So on one hand, it's a personal, it, it's I. It's not something abstract. On another hand, we're just talking about shades and this not maybe not very attractive uh, place. The shade, death. So interesting. 
We would be warm below the storm. Mm, lovely. Yeah, warm below the storm. Hide from problems. Mm -hmm. Hiding from problems. Hiding? Warm. Why warm? Not cold below the storm, which would be more logical. Yeah. But warm below the storm. We are protected in the clubs mm -hmm. garden, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, I like to give the idea of safety. So how is warm is it the idea of safety? Because when we talk about house, it's warm and mm -hmm. nice. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe it's your feelings. So maybe, your feelings. Mm -hmm. maybe it, mean, it means uh, you will be feel comfortable with those at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, maybe warm is not only physical warm, so it's not cold, not hot, it's warm, it's nice. Maybe it's also this uh, inner warm. When you, if you're in this place, it's a peaceful place. Peaceful. Okay. So if you come here, you feel peaceful. Yeah. Do you have a mock to see Yeah. Ah. And uh, then you feel warm here, below the storm. So now we have a hint, a, a, a little bit of a uh, description of this, uh, this reality, where we come from. So we have water, the sea, separating these realities. And down here, we understand, yeah, it's nice, it's peaceful. What's up here? Storm. It's a storm. It's not very friendly. It's, it's not nice. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. But if you go underwater, what happens to storm? You don't feel it. Anymore. You don't feel it. Mm -hmm. It still exists here. The waves can go up and down. You have horrible winds blowing and uh, what have you. But you go underwater. You're you're mm -hmm. You don't care about it. You don't care about it. You don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's this place. What? So what's the storm? Like the storm in our life. Mm -hmm. yeah. the Emotions, bad, uh, bad things happening. In our little hideaway beneath the waves. Oh, so now we, we have a more specific description. We have this barrier, we have something horrible here. And we have a little hideaway. So it's not all space underwater. It's like a little bubble, a it's forest a field, a garden. Yeah, it's not a city, it's not a country, <coughs> it's just a little garden. So why do we uh, have a, a little hideaway? Why don't we have a big happy kingdom? Why don't we have a whole Atlantis in it? It's hard to find. Mm -hmm. Why? Because small places is uh, all, uh, all the time uh, mm -hmm. very convenient. Mm -hmm. If you have a huge house, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it uh, could be cold, mm -hmm. it will be hard mm -hmm. to make him warm, mm -hmm. uh, or it uh, takes a lot of time mm -hmm. or, and a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And if you had a small house, mm -hmm. you, have, uh, you could live there by yourself and your wife, and it mm -hmm. will be always convenient mm -hmm. and warm and good. Yeah. So if you have a little place, it's good for a, a small group of people. It's more private, more personal. Whereas if you have a big place like Atlantis, ah, oh, where do I go? Then it's it's not uh, it's not your personal place. It's for everyone. So it's a big place. It's a bit uh, alien. Maybe. And in psychology, small places is associated with, I know. Uh, child safety mm -hmm. alone with the mm -hmm. mother. Yes, yeah, exactly. And, uh, mm -hmm. This, uh, how do you call it? The bees make it, you know. High, mm -hmm. high piano. Mm -hmm. And it's usually a small place because mm -hmm. it gives the idea of safety and mm -hmm. protection. Yeah, because it's just you. Just you and your safety. <coughs> if you have other people and you're like, people. And space, yeah, if it's enormous, it doesn't mm -hmm. give this idea. Yeah, space can be depressing. Yeah. yeah. Scary. We have a little hideaway. So we have now the word hideaway, which kind of uh, 
consists two words, hide and away. Mm -hmm. Something like uh, vault. Mm -hmm. So now we say we want to hide from the storm and hide away. We don't want to participate in the storm. We don't want to fight the storm. That's important because very often when people uh, face the storm, like, oh, I need to fight it. I need to be the uh, winner. I need to conquer it. I need to prove that I'm big and great. And here like, oh, no, I'm just a little coward. You can call me a coward, but I don't want to fight anything. I don't want to participate in it. I don't want to put my energy in it. I just want to go to this happy place. If you want to be in the storm, then uh, God bless you. But uh, uh, not me. Has anyone memorized it? <laughs> Not yet. Never okay. give you my code. That's only for a couple of minutes. No? Okay. Oh, oh no. Rest in our head on the seabed. <laughs> but what is noticeable about Hardaway, it, uh -huh. it implies that you can go there for some time and then return uh -huh. back. Uh -huh. If we talk about. Uh -huh death or paradise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, usually you don't come back. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Not that easily at least. Usually. Yeah. usually. <laughs> Not that easily at least. A little hideaway. Uh, death. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little hideaway. Call I'll again be back in a couple of centuries. Yeah. Okay. Again, uh, who says? Who says no? Yeah. In Christianity that's exactly the case. You, you die but then you come back. In other religions too, you die when you come back. Especially in Buddhism, yeah. I'll put it in another relation, but yeah, in philosophy. Mm -hmm. Beneath the waves. Waves, waves. Oh, I love waves. That makes you think about physics. Oh, waves again, what's a wave? Something moving, something changing. Curve. Curve. Oh, we have storm, which is more chaotic. And we have waves which are less chaotic and uh, well, some people say that our reality is like a wave it's like flickering in and out of existence now it's here, now it's not here, now it's here, now it's not here billions times a second so that's the wave, maybe a wave like uh, the uh, illusory reality which we think is solid, but it's not really solid, it's like a wave. Uh, you go deeper and deeper, you find your little hideaway beneath these waves. <coughs> the next line, oh, I love it. Rest in our head on the seabed. So how, do we, how do we read it? First question is how do you imagine a seabed? Uh -huh. Yeah, what, what's all this seabed? Is it a regular bed where you have a rest or something else? No, we the have bed a is a word bed. for yeah, bottom of the, for the bottom of the yeah. sea, it's the term. Uh -huh. Yeah, you say a river bed, ocean bed, sea bed, but in this place it's a very good question. Do we have a real bed in, in, in here? <laughs> because if you talk about bed, uh, then you talk about sleep. Yeah, if you talk, talk about, about sleep, sleep yeah, rest your head. and rest, and uh, what usually happens to people who rest their head on the seabed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in our, uh, this normal, this normal, in, the in this reality, people who are in this position resting their head on the seabed it means they're dead really and very dead <laughs> they're not trying to do anything they're just oh, oh, I'll just stay here what happens in this place we, we have this uh, uh, double uh, feeling double meaning on one hand it's like ah hooray we are dead now we can rest a bit on the other hand it's a uh, happy place, it's a nice place, it's a safe place, so it's uh, it's not something bad, it's something uh, nice, normal, uh, resting is good, 
your party want to rest, rest on our head. And again, it's, it's nice because uh, to rest your head on one hand is a, a normal expression. Yeah. Rest your head. On another hand, if you look at it more literally, rest in your head. It's like, oh, you think too much. <laughs> hmm. You've been thinking too much. Because when you are here, up here in this storm, you just try uh, making sense of, of what you can perceive. You try to make sense, you try to uh, think it, to think it, to think it, to put into some frames that you understand. Yeah, that's our uh, natural uh, desire, natural wish. And your head gets really tired. But if, if you come to this reality on the waves, well then you just know. You know, as we say, well, we, we have like, no. And no is a strange word because you don't say k. Yeah, you just say no, like no. Mm. Yeah. So if you want to say that you really no, like uh, you don't think about it, you just uh, you just no. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to say no. <laughs> no, <coughs> like uh, agnomike. Yeah, you, you may love that the economy comes from the word uh, gno, from the word gno. And gnomic is something uh, a heuristic, yes. like short and uh, very key. Yes, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's kn is like uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge, cognition, mm -hmm. yeah? cognition. Cognition. Cognize. Cognition, cognize. Cognize. Co is like together, cognize, cognition. This is here and here. So it's, a, it's, it's a pity that we uh, miss uh, this uh, uh, sound, knoll. Uh, ah, oh, English, what are you doing? <laughs> so when you come to this Phonetics. place. Phonetics, not English. English. <laughs> So when you come to this place, you just know. You don't need to uh, rack your uh, brains anymore. Because everything makes sense here. It doesn't make sense here because you don't see, you don't have this big frame of reference. You have this local frame of reference. Okay. <coughs> so uh, if you if you just talk about it, it sounds very maybe stupid and abstract. But if, if you have a, a nice dream and you try to retell it, then you know how it feels. <laughs> you have a nice dream and in the dream everything makes sense. And it's all connected and uh, it's all a good story. You come back here, you try to retell it, and it sounds like a stupid rubbish. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just, you can't take it, it's uh, unlanguageable. So your head really uh, gets tired. Okay, rest in our head on the seabed. Du, 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 du. In an octopus's garden, near a cave. Ah, there is a cave. Now there is a cave. In the shade, in the shade, near a cave. And there might be a bed, then why not? Yeah, maybe. Literally a bed. Just a little bed, a little hideaway, a little hideaway. Like a tree house. Uh -huh. So now we have octopus, there's garden in this hideaway, and this garden is near a cave. Uh -huh. Why do we need a cave? Cave is like a house where the octopus sleeps. Okay, good. And we have decided he has his garden. Mm -hmm. So what is a cave? A cave is a strange hole. You may not believe me, but a cave is a strange hole. So all the time in culture, caves are mysterious places. You go into the cave, you never know where you're going to end up. Rabbit's hole. Rabbit's hole, warm hole, whatever. So a cave is again is a strange. Portal it might be entrance to other world. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and enters to all the world. So do you come here through the cave? Do you exit through the cave? No, but caves, what do you know about caves? So you can live in the cave. What else can you do in the cave? Hide the treasure. Hide the treasure. Get or lost. Hide. Get lost, yeah. Mm. Paint. Paint. Find the resting place. Find the resting place. Yeah, so a cave can be like a tomb. Can be. Do we know any uh, other famous caves? We can hide from the rain. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was, that's exactly what uh, the hero of the point does. Mm -hmm. He hides in the maybe he hides in the cave from the storm mm -hmm. and waves. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, a, a cave is a place where you do your magic. So it's good for your magic. And what else is a cave? What's this uh, famous uh, illustration with the cave? I have a question. Uh, can be a cave and entrance to the upper world yes. when it's a storm? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's this way. You, you come from here and then you go out here. Maybe. All yeah, because the cave. The creatures live in the caves, uh -huh. like dragons, fairies. Yes. Yeah, because the cave is a strange hole, number one magical area. Uh -huh. And also we have this uh, uh, famous uh, thing we said it about uh, reality is like a cave and we watch shadows on the wall. Yeah. Have you heard it? Has anyone heard it? I think you mentioned it before. Story about the cave, it's uh, something antique. No, no, it's not antique. It's, uh, well, relatively. So it's like uh, uh, what this reality is, is a cave, we sit in the cave, our back to the entrance, we look at the wall, and that's all we see. We don't see the real world, which is behind us, but we see the shadows on this wall, and we think that's a reality. Who said it? I forgot. But it's, it's really, really famous, you can find it. It's an antique myth of, uh, I suppose, Platon or somebody. Yeah, Plato, so someone. You, when you start doing it, it just gets like psh, 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 bigger files. and bigger and bigger. And you, you don't really remember who said what because they all borrow it from each other. Yes, and uh. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. but anyway, we have it. Okay. Okay, a really strange hole. So the whole. Uh, place here is really strange. Octopus garden. And also, uh, and caves. man comes from cave. Mm -hmm. We say caveman. Mm -hmm. If you believe in cavemen. Yeah, if you believe in cavemen, that's one of the caveman. corner cornerstones of the mm -hmm. central central mm -hmm. philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the beginning of mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So you may say that at first you're a primitive person living in the cave uh, and uh, watching the shadows on the wall. Then you leave this cave and you come to the octopus garden, which is a more real place than the cave, or nicer in a way. Uh -huh. The octopus garden, your cave. <coughs> we would sing and dance around. That sounds nice. So what do you do in this garden? Do you plant anything? No, why? You also you have relax fun. and uh, you have fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So number one, you need to rest. It's like instruction. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. If you want to be happy, number one, have a rest. Like feed him, you can drink, mm -hmm. like you sleep. I don't need him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So number one is have a rest or maybe die. <laughs> No, no, no. Or just not relax, relax. <laughs> don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. So uh, <coughs> you have this storm which is really, really tiring. Let go of it. <coughs> Let go of it. Yeah, escape it somehow. Don't try to fight it because it's futile, it's useless. Have a rest. And then when you're rested, uh, then this place is, like we said, is peaceful, is happy place, and it's uh, happiness, peacefulness comes into you while you're resting there. It's like uh, you let go of your uh, heavy stuff, which uh, was uh, bothering you, and instead you let in this uh, nice stuff. And then when you wake up, you want to sing and to dance. When do you want to sing and to dance? When you're happy. Right. 
we can sing and dance right now if you want to. Why not? Why not? If you want to leave your friends behind. Maybe in the end of, of our meeting, we can sing it and dance. It would be nice. We already sang at the beginning of this class uh -huh. together. Uh -huh. Okay, we would sing and dance around. So it's like a really expressing happiness. It's like a natural expression of your happiness. It's not something uh, uh, pretending, not fake. So something that comes from within because you're really happy. You want to sing and to dance because we know we can't be found. So this way they are happy <laughs> because they know. And that, I think, tells us a lot about uh, our reality. I think that's about actually the Beatles themselves. Uh -huh. They finally got rid of all their uh -huh. fans and uh -huh. escaped somewhere <laughs> where, where they can be themselves and not yeah. be bothered uh -huh. by fans. Uh -huh. Yeah. So they finally found uh, this uh, special place which they took of their whole life. Uh -huh. and now <laughs> <At the ending>. <laughs> <laughs> it took a whole, whole life there, dead. <laughs> Goodness, they yeah. found the place. But I don't think that uh, life after death is so bad. Of course, right. it's not bad. It's very nice and happy. You have octopus. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> have the garden, the cave, the mm -hmm. octopus. Mm -hmm. What else do you need for happiness? Nothing. So you sing and dance because you're happy. Well, uh, if you sing and happy because you know you can't be found, that's it's, it's like uh, you're happy because you know that the storm and these waves can't reach you. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, does it mean you were really very happy in this life? No, if you are so happy you want to sing and dance just because someone, something can't find you, is it a good life? Did you have a very good life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, found means uh, something is looking for you. It's not just something that happens here. It's active. It wants to take you. It wants to hurt you. Maybe somebody. Some maybe people. somebody, maybe something, some force, some people. We, we, we don't know, but uh, we can't be found. I mean, someone, something is looking for us and Enemies it's not very good. Hmm? Enemies, for example. Enemies, yeah. Uh, or who, what are uh, enemies? Huh? Depends on the person. On the people person. who has out the mind. So we have friends, we start with friends, I'll ask my friends to come and see. But now we have the opposite. It's a very balanced universe here. We have good, we have bad, we have up, we have down, it's very nice. Uh, now we have something uh, negative looking for us, but here is our hideaway, a force filled shelter. And maybe uh, because that's the place of peace and happiness, so nothing evil can come because it's not happy and peaceful. Maybe. But anyway, it means that uh, this reality is really, really uh, a bad place, uh, really unhappy. If you want to sing and dance, go and come here. Because <coughs> uh, usually, oh, he can't find me. Where is he? Where is he? I'm lost. I'm lonely. I'm lonely. Here, no, here you are happy because you finally escape it. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade. Again, shade, shade, shade. Come back uh, to shade after being in the cave one time. So it kind of reminds us what sort of a place it is in the shade, in the shade, in the shade. You're dead, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Hooray. We would shout and scream about the coral that lies beneath the waves. What is it? Can you see the progress? Mm. More active. More mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So in the first stanza, it's just, I'd like to be, it's just, just a wish. I'd like to be 
like a, a neutral. A second, I asked my friend to come and see Anacopsis garden with me. So now we come and see. First, we want to go there. That's our wish. Second, we come and see. That's something that we actually do. We don't just see the wish. Oh, I'd like to be under this sea. Where is it? You really uh, actually get up and go there. So they are beginning to explore the, the place around mm -hmm. the hideaway. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then resting our head on the seabed. But if you're not quite dead, it's time to uh, die mm -hmm. properly. Probably. If you're tired, it's time to recharge. What does it mean to rest again? You uh, uh, let go of your uh, previous charge, you get uh, your new charge. Then when you recharge it, you feel happy, you sing and dance around. So uh, again, uh, come and see is a more or less neutral. I'd like, that's neutral, come and see neutral. Rest in our head on the seabed, uh, very uh, passive, relaxed, quiet. That we would sing and dance around. Now that's bad. That there's more life in it. Now you have this uh, moving, expressing, singing, singing, dancing. Uh, also magical, because we know we can't be found. And now we would shout and swim about. Now it, it's getting uh, bigger. Not just singing, shouting. How is shouting different from singing? It's more loud. Mm -hmm. And louder. And singing is not, uh, shouting is not as beautiful as singing. Maybe. Mm -hmm. And not, it's not uh, so peaceful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shouting is near to you. It's mm -hmm. already like knocking you yourself out. You can shout off anyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, may maybe a uh, uh, singing. It's uh, still you have your uh, discipline. But if it you're feels singing, like going crazy over here. and if you're singing, you think about uh, melody. You think about words. You maybe you you think about this uh, harmony. If you shout, you just uh, uh, you just express yourself. You just uh, let it out whatever it needs to to be let out. And it's more primal, barbaric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's also intellectual, yeah. Childish. Mm -hmm. Very active. Yes, and active. So when you come here, you're a little bit like, well, I'm not sure where am I, what am I to do? Can I? Can shy, maybe. Yeah. A bit yeah. shy, a bit stiff. And then, like, you, oh. then you settle in. Yeah, then you settle down, then you relax, then you let this place take over you, this peacefulness, and then you feel more and more open. Uh, first you uh, sing and dance, because uh, it's nice, it's lovely, I can sing and dance, I'm a little snow white. Yeah. I'm a happy cloud. I'm a happy cloud. And then when you do it and nothing bad happens, you do it, uh, you open up a little bit more and nothing bad happens. And you're like, oh, why, why just sing? I can just shout. You, you understand like, yeah. by this moment, you understand that nobody is going to punish you for running and shouting. You don't have to, to be like... You don't have these rules, yeah. Uh -huh. You do what you feel, you do what you want to do, because if you come here, you can't do anything bad. It means that you're in this state of mind, of soul, uh, which is... Uh, like uh, on the same frequency to this place which is peaceful you can come here if you're peaceful bad things don't come here so you can do what you like because whatever you want to do it would be nice yeah. so you can run you can shout not a problem so we open up in this place yeah. if you're uh, surrounded by storm by aggression by stress what happens you want to defend yourself want to go stiff and spiky and aggressive too, maybe. Protect it. Yeah. Here, as you go, then no, nobody wishes you any harm. And you don't need this protection. You, you, you can just be happy. You can be yourself. You can open up. Mm -hmm. We will shout and swim about. Okay, swimming, nice. 
uh, exploring. You don't. You're not. Uh, uh, you, you don't just sit in this little place, you can swim about, you have all this uh, space to your pleasure. Swim about the coral that lies beneath the waves. So we had in our little hideaway beneath the waves. Now as we explore it a bit more, we see the coral beneath the waves. So what's coral? Why do we need coral? For the cave, for the coral. So it's like a uh, tree in ordinary life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe a tree. Mm -hmm. Do we like corals? Yes. 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 They are precious, I think. Mm -hmm. They are very beautiful, but they are very uh, <coughs> hard skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is a coral? It's a plant under the sea. That is it a plant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The middle of the sea. If, if that's a gold garden, then the coral can be like a tree, the local tree. Mm -hmm. Actually, a coral is not really a plant as such. Anyway, it looks like a tree. And it's beautiful. Well, this is how we wish we can prohibit to eat. Yeah, it's hard to eat a coral. <laughs> the thing about corals. I'm not sure, do they actually grow deep beneath the waves? Don't they grow in shallow places? Yeah, I think they are. So it's again a very special magical coral because it's somewhere deep in this place. Then again, this whole place is magical, why not? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like in the heart of, of the sea. Uh -huh. So now we have this complete picture this hidden garden. Yeah. Hidden garden with the gardener who can or uh, cannot let you in. With the cave, with the tree, lovely, with lots of friends, a happy, peaceful, lots of friends. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Sounds familiar. The coral, coral that lies beneath the waves, beneath the ocean waves. Ah. It's growing. So first we had under the sea. I'd like to be under the sea. And uh, now, it's ocean. now it's ocean. What happened? The picture gets larger. Uh -huh. This place is growing. When we come here, it's growing. Universe expands. Universe expands! <laughs> oh no! Do you believe in the universe expanding? No, I mean his universe. His universe is expanding. Because our universe doesn't seem to expand really. And w what is it doing if it's not expanding? Well, it's hard to say, but it's not expanding. Well, how do you, uh, how do uh, they uh, know that it's expanding? They don't know, they suppose. How do they suppose it's expanding? They look at so-called redshift. They say, ah, you know redshift. It's like when you look at galaxies, or distant things, objects, and some of them are a little bit red, and some of them are a little bit blue. And uh, it, uh, they used to believe, it was a theory, that uh, if it goes away, then it becomes red. If it goes away, it means uh, there's more matter between you and it. And it means the universe is expanding. But and uh, now we know that it's uh, not really the case and uh, this color is the age. Red or blue means old or young. And that's all. It's not moving, it's uh, aging. So uh, you can't say that the universe is expanding. This color of what? Of, of, of uh, stars, galaxies. You mean the spectrum. The spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's, it's not like they're moving, it's like they're moving in time, not in space. But here, yeah, the, the, this universe is expanding. So they are expanding in time. Yes. At least. Expanding in time. Or shrinking in time. Mm. No. It's like, a, I think blue is young and red is old. Maybe the other way. I don't know. But you even uh, If we talk about stars, then um, the younger ones are white. Well, blue is white. Mm -hmm. yeah, so well, red. anyway, uh, you can actually find it on YouTube. It's a very good lecture. It's not very long. It's What's his name? Halton Harp. 
I think I have it on Shaky Birds with Taktsay, Halton Arp, something. I'll write Halton Arp, but probably that's not his name. Harp, Halton Harp. But anyway, you look for Red Shift and uh, you'll find him. Okay. So maybe this place is expanding because you are there and that's where your attention is. So this peace, peaceful place grows bigger. And maybe the storm is shrinking because you don't pay much attention to it. Because uh, reality feeds on our attention. When you think about something good or bad, you give it uh, your energy to it and it's fitting on it and then it happens. And so also when theory. you take a close look at something, you uh -huh. see a lot more, a lot of uh -huh. details uh -huh. and this thing gets bigger uh -huh. for you because uh -huh. you know much more about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Always the ocean waves. Oh, what joy for every girl and boy. So uh, it's a very uh, nice, lovely uh, text poem. Because it's not selfish. What do you usually have? Just I, I, the narrator, I, I, I. Everything's for me. Everything's for me. I'm the boss. I'm, I'm so special. I'm it all the center of the me. universe. Mm -hmm. What do we have here? We, 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 and all mm -hmm. the others. Yeah, we have uh, my friends, and with me. And we would be warm, our little hideaway, our head. And we would say, we know we can't be found. So it, it gives you this uh, feeling of uh, community. Yeah. It's not just a lonely place just for you, a selfish pig. <laughs> oh, I'm a selfish pig, I want a place for myself. Well, joy for every girl and boy, and now we have every girl and boy. So it's like, first we have, we is a bit abstract still. Yeah, who, who is we? Here we have every, every girl, every boy. Why every girl and boy? Why not every? This is our friends and social nets. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think he means the whole population. Mm -hmm. Because everyone, old or aged, has at some point being boy or a girl. Uh -huh. Everyone deserves to be happy uh -huh. and to have such a special place. Uh -huh. And I think everyone needs a special place. Uh -huh. And I think everyone has this special place. Yes. I mean, <laughs> your inner secret garden. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And your own octopus. Your own, your own octopus. octopus. What's your octopus? Maybe it's your heart. Yeah, we uh, alike a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you watch uh, uh, the Caribbean pirates, then you have this <laughs> octopus guy with his heart. And when, you, connection. and when you're dying, you go to your own octopus. Mm -hmm. Octopus's garden. Do you really have to die to go there? Uh -huh. well, in a way. Mm -hmm. Every girl and boy is like, ah. Uh, I every girl, every boy. Mm -hmm. I think he is uh, comparing men and woman to boy and girl. Mm -hmm. Boy and girl mm -hmm. is more innocent, more mm -hmm. virgin, mm -hmm. uh, more uh, peaceful, mm -hmm. more friendly. Mm -hmm. more and here, uh, more this more place life. for such people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like being like children. In my thinking, uh, the hero uh, felt uh, himself. Uh, connected with uh, everyone's mm -hmm. uh, uh, creature mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, so he wished uh, the happiness uh, uh, to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's like, ah, oh, no, no girls here. <laughs> no, no boys here. Oh, every girl, every boy, you and you and you and you and me and you and you. Everyone. Everyone. Boy. And it's word every. Every means you like point your finger. Knowing they're happy, they're safe. Again. So first of uh, the octopus knows where we've been, then we know we can't be found. 
Now they know uh, they're happy, they're safe. So uh, that's a place of knowledge as well. Peace and knowledge. Nice place, I think. Uh, and again, knowing they're happy. Do you know you're happy? Mm -hmm. You can just know it. Mm -hmm. Feel it. Know, mm -hmm. Knowing it's strange. Lord. Mm -hmm. I know I'm happy. <laughs> Do you know you're happy? No. Do you know Sometimes. you're happy? Sometimes. Oh, when you want to free fall. But when you have happy people in the room. Yeah. When you're happy, you can notice it. Mm -hmm. Because you don't mm -hmm. pay much attention. Mm -hmm. You're just happy. Mm -hmm. It's not really your happiness when you think, oh, I'm happy. Hmm. Okay, let's be look at my diary. Uh, be happy. Five to six. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and more minutes. <laughs> And what we have here, they, so first we say, I'd like to be, oh, it's just about me. Then I'll ask my friend and we, we, we. And then you say, oh, but maybe we is a, a special sort of people. Maybe you need to be uh, a special person to come here. Maybe if your parents are from this place, maybe if you speak this language, maybe if you're hair is blonde, maybe maybe if you know 10 languages, then you can come here. Maybe this we is a, a, a closed group. But now, no. Every girl and boy, they, everyone, we, they, I, all together. Again, okay, they're safe. No, when they're safe. Do children often think, oh, I'm safe now? I think they do sometimes. Sometimes? When they Usually. get scared, uh, uh -huh. they, maybe they don't think it or uh -huh. know it, but they definitely feel it. They run uh -huh. for safety, uh -huh. they return uh -huh. home for safety. Uh -huh. uh, is it a normal, natural, when uh, in our culture, when children need to think about their safety? No. 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 You should be safe and protected all uh -huh. the time. Uh -huh. So ideally, in our culture today, we feel like children <coughs> should not think about their safety. They should be safe. They should not yeah, think it should about be it. Taken from yeah, practice. ideally. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it uh, had always been so. Obviously, it had not been so. But uh, now, today, and that's uh, what we read today. Knowing they're safe again means uh, the children, even children, can feel this uh, horrible storm how it's not very good for them. So they're like little adults. Oh, I'm safe here. Because yeah. uh, I guess uh, normally children don't think much about safety because uh, they don't uh, think that they can be hurt or that they can die, something bad can happen to them. Like, no, I'm immortal, I'm... But I think that if they think about happiness, They've been through something mm -hmm. terrible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. overcame some storm, mm -hmm. and now they're knowing the safety. But I think that uh, happy children shouldn't um, anticipate that they can be not safe mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So it's not normal mm -hmm. to think that you can, um, so you, you can be in danger. Maybe he says uh, children or boy and girl, uh, referring the whole humanity, mm -hmm. because uh, the age of uh, Homo sapiens compared to the age of planet, mm -hmm. we're really very mm -hmm. young. Babies. Yeah, we're really yeah, babies. It's like uh, five minutes of the yeah. 24 hour clock. Five minutes. Or maybe one or two second. minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're literally children here. Mm -hmm. so. Maybe a girl and boy is like soul. Yeah. Because uh, your soul comes here. It's always young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every girl and boy. Young at heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then something interesting. We would be so happy you and me. So happy. Now, so now there are only you and me. Mm -hmm. and so what changes here? There's no more uh, girls and boys, mm -hmm. just me and you, mm -hmm. being private. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's more specific. The first is just we, then every girl and boy, we can see it. We can see it better. First we just see some uh, abstract mask, we. Then we see every girl and boy, and in our mind we see a girl and a boy, a more clear picture. Now it's very specific, you and me. Now he talks to the reader. Talks to the reader. Or to the listener in his case, mm -hmm. to this individual mm -hmm. who listens mm -hmm. to the song. Mm -hmm. It's like, you think you just uh, stand here and listen to me. No, you're invited, you're a part of it too, if you want to. If you want to. And we would be so happy, you and me. So uh, who is this you and me? What kind of happiness is it? I mean, if you if you listen to most songs, boys, girls, we will be so happy you and me. What do you think about? It's love. Love, kisses, <laughs> romance. Romance, yeah. What do you think here? Is it about love and kisses? Maybe it's about friendship. Maybe it's about friendship. Maybe it's uh, something bigger. Global friendship, uh -huh. community. Uh -huh. Like everyone, you and me, and you, and you, and you, and me, and you personally, not just abstract you, but you personally, not just abstract he, but me personally. I'm here, I know what I'm talking about. No one there to tell us what to do. <laughs> That's our dream of our life, no one tells us what to do. So here, it means here it's the opposite, here, in the storm place. Everybody tells you what to do, there are lots of rules, bosses, things, laws. Here, we already know, uh, nobody tells you what to do. You want freedom. to sleep, yeah, it's freedom, you sleep. You want to sing, you sing. You want to dance, you dance. You want to shout. They are. Can I shout? Can I shout? You want to, to rest your head? Like this. <laughs> You can. Yeah, you can do anything you like. Nobody tells you what to do. So you may think, ah, what about the octopus? He's a big guy and uh, what about his rules? Probably he's very tall. Mm -hmm. But uh, like we said, maybe, maybe if you can come to this place, means you pass this dress code of peacefulness. Face control. Face control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm means you really can do what you want you really to do because you don't want yeah. it to bad. Mm -hmm. I think this uh, song is very much like in its spirit, in its message, mm -hmm. to imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because Lennon says imagine all the people. Yeah, you and me. Yes, and here you and me, mm -hmm. every boy and girl. And yeah, that's, that's the irony. If you're the drama, nobody ever takes you seriously. That's a tragedy. Ah, if you're John Lennon, then you write Imagine and immediately everybody knows about it. If you're Ringo Starr, you write... But John Lennon right. was actually the founder. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, was his band, that's why everybody looked up at him. No, that's because he was singing and Paul McCartney too. Yeah. And nobody, nobody ever takes drummer seriously. You know you drummers take it seriously. But maybe if you're a drummer Windows Star. If you're a drummer, it means you can be a, a like a drama. <laughs> you know, a drama yeah. Doing drama. But uh, maybe. Like a more fun. There is a lot of contradiction between uh, this mm -hmm. phrase and uh, the phrase uh, "octopus will let us in." There is at least one rule uh, that said by octopus. You yeah, but it's uh, before you enter. Before You're here. You enter, yes. Here you still have rules. Yeah, good point. Outside this force field place garden, you still have this rule. If you can pass this face control or you cannot pass face control. Once you're in here, in here, inside, no rules. You're free and safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to be under the sea, the octopus's garden will be good. 
So suddenly we make it very uh, personal. Uh, you. You listen to the song, it's it's not about just something, something, it's about you. With you, with you, with you. Come with me, come with me, come with me, you, personally. Yeah? It looks like an invitation. Yeah, it is an invitation. Very uh, frightened invitation. Mm -hmm. Frightening. Yes, it's a bit scary. It's like, if you're tired of all these problems and storms, I know a good place. If you're not afraid, then you're very welcome <laughs> to join me there in Octopus's garden anytime. I think you can read it metaphorically as mm -hmm. your maybe place where you go with memories, mm -hmm. happy memories, mm -hmm. where you go when you need to switch mm -hmm. from the stress of the reality. You don't have to die <laughs> to go there. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Some childhood memories. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because children uh, often imagine, like, uh, remember some happy uh, mm -hmm. moments of their lives when they're scared or, mm -hmm. and they think that, oh, I, I, they imagine that their mother or father mm -hmm. are standing mm -hmm. behind their back mm -hmm. to give them strength to do something. Okay. Then who's the octopus? Why he would let us in know where we've been? And I'd ask my friends to come and see. Oh, it takes a little reflection. Mm -hmm. But I think it could be managed. Yes. But what we have here, it's not like, oh, I will sit in this garden and look at flowers and think about... Uh, it's, it's very active. Sing and dance and shout and swim about. It's, it's very active. It's not like... It's a, a physical expression of your happiness because uh, how can you be really, really uh, free and happy and just sit like this? Yeah. So usually we are we're kind of used to think that uh, the spiritual is important and you need to restrain the physical. Why? No. If you express yourself, you love your physical expressions too. You don't want to hurt anyone, you don't want to offend anyone, you come in peace. And then if you run and shout, then it's good. It's good for you, it's good for everyone. Because you mean good. But you mean well. be bothering for others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a shouting. special place where you can do it without but bothering anyone. What a, so they don't, mm -hmm. they don't hear because you're beneath the waves. Oh. They're up there. Actually, British are champions in uh, inventing those rules of behavior, mm -hmm. codes, and mm -hmm. so on, etiquette or whatever. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's very <laughs> British song. Yeah, it's a very revolutionary. It's a pity that uh, it's not so popular or people think it's kind of childish. Well, if you really look at it, it's, it's not so childish as it uh, seems to be. As for rules, and yeah, but then uh, here in, in Russia we have lots of uh, rules too. Oh, they're reserved and... That's they're reserved, but it's like if you... But when they come to the stadium to support mm -hmm. their football mm -hmm. team, mm -hmm. it all goes away into yeah. pieces. But what do you think about uh, standing on the table? Great. Great? Please uh, demonstrate. Very us. helpful <laughs> if you <laughs> just take off your shoes, please. Yeah. <laughs> it's very helpful if you need to change the light bulb. <laughs> like you can. Now you can read a poem. Uh, okay. <laughs> look into the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just look into the camera because it looks here. I'd like to be under the sea, in an octopus garden in the shade. He'd let us know. He let us in, knows where we have been. In his octopus garden in the shade, I'd like I'd ask my friends to come and see an octopus garden with me. I'd like to be under the sea in an octopus garden in the shade. We would be warm below the storm in our little hideaway beneath the waves, resting our head on the sea sea bed. In an octopus garden near a cave. Okay, now we can sing it. <laughs> okay. We would sing and dance around because we know 
we can't be found. I'd like to be <coughs> under the sea, in an octopus's garden, in a shade. We will shout, swim about, the coral that lies beneath the waves, beneath the ocean waves. Oh, what joy for every darling boy, knowing they're happy, they're safe. We would be so happy, you and me, knowing that there was what to do. I'd like to be under the sea, in an octopus's garden with you. In an octopus's garden with you. In an octopus's garden with you. Hooray! <laughs> On the web. It is a bit hard though when you haven't uh, when you haven't listened it. Uh, yet. Yeah. And who well, sings the, who sings this song? John Lennon or McCartney? Or Ringo Starr. Or Ringo Starr. Or they all together. Or they all together. So that's your homework. Find the song and listen to it, and uh, tell all your friends about it. Let's Record how you sing it and send to VK Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. And send to Ringo Starr. I sent the ring to start. I think he'll kill it. himself. If <laughs> 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 yeah. He'll go to Octopus's garden <laughs> if he sees them. And rest his head. Yeah. On yeah. Well, well, thank you for opening uh, for us uh, this uh, uh, beautiful lyrics. Oh, thank you. I never expected myself. Yeah. I want to say about the role of drama. Yes. Uh, for example, I like uh, gothic rock mm -hmm. and dark mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, people who uh, didn't know these uh, styles mm -hmm. come to uh, our parties, gothic parties, and say, oh, this is uh, no drama in the group. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, these people uh, like uh, heavy metal, first mm -hmm. of all. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they uh, thought that drama, uh, this is uh, the main part of yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, not heavy metal. Anyway, thank you for coming. Here we have our shaky burns, shaky burns of Kentucky. Shaky like Shakespeare, burns like Robert Burns. Shaky burns of Kentucky. Also uh, on Facebook, but just very basic. You can find all news updates, things, topics, discussions, pictures, videos, all the stuff there. And you're very welcome to share your things, ideas all that you would like to share. You can record with your gothic. Uh, yeah, you can make a recording with your yeah. gothic. Okay, that's a good idea. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll have like two, I think, two more meetings in May, two or three. And I, I don't know if we have anything in June, maybe one or two, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm going away in the middle of June, maybe early, I don't know yet. So it's a time if you want to discuss something specific, it's time to let me know, really, if you want to do it this year, before all. Okay? Well, thanks for coming. What is plural for octopus? Is it octopi? What's plural for octopus? Is it octopi? Octopuses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.